Hey guys, welcome back to Business Analytics. This is going to be our last video installment um, or video lecture or video in-class exercise, whatever you want to call it, um, prior to a lab um, and the last one of the semester for you guys anyways. Um, yeah, first just wanted to say thanks for a great semester. I'm glad we got through it. Um, but yeah, if you are listening to this, you made it through, you made it to the end, you're on your way to completing your last lab, lab number eight, and yeah, proud of you guys. So, all right, um, let's get into it. I anticipate that this video will be a lot shorter um, than the previous videos because it's all pretty much stuff that we've covered before. We're just kind of putting it together, okay? Um, but I'll probably be wrong and it'll probably be like an hour. So we'll see. Let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to go ahead and start by reading uh, into this. And now um, I will say that any of this stuff you can find um, in the content tab in Brightspace and it'll be under the week 16 materials. Okay. Sounds good. And I believe it's called uh, model comparison or choosing a model or something like that. All right. All right, uh, let's combine the information on logistic regression and decision trees into one comprehensive analysis. We will use uh, data that we are already familiar with from uh, this exercise, lostsales.jmp. This will give us an opportunity to combine multiple approaches in decision making about the best model. We will also consider economic cost um, to the error in our model and adjust cutoffs to make sure that our predictions minimize costs. We're actually not going to adjust cutoffs today. Um, I just missed that when I was editing this lab. Um, so we're really just going to be comparing um, a straight logistic regression to a straight um, a decision tree model, which is something we've done already. We've done that in um, some of our later labs and our cluster analysis and our neural networks. So this lab might just feel like review to you guys, which is, which is okay. All right, uh, the data set contains 550 records um, for quotes provided over a six month period. The variables in the data set are quote, the quoted price in dollars for the order, time to delivery, the quoted number of calendar days um, within which the order is to be delivered, part type, yeah, so you guys remember this data set, um, OE for original equipment, AM for aftermarket, um, status, whether the quote resulted in a subsequent order within 30 days. Um, lost, the order was not placed, won, the order was placed. All right, so first job is to open the file. Um, I have done that already, so yay. So checkbox me. Um, the second job is to analyze distributions. All right, so we're very, very, very familiar with that. So we just go up here to analyze, um, goodness, analyze distribution, and then we just throw everything we got over into columns and I just highlighted all that stuff by clicking or by holding down the shift button you hit OK you get your distributions I like to stack them because I think it is uh, more readable um, so yeah so the idea behind analyzing the distributions is as always just to make sure we don't have any junk in there any outliers um, that shouldn't be in there that sort of thing um, now we see here that in quote and in time delivery, the box and whisper plot shows um, something that it identifies as outliers, um, given the, um, I believe it's the 1.5 um, uh, interquartile range calculation um, that it's adding to the third and the f and subtracting from the first quartile. Um, that's a uh, first five weeks kind of concept that we had uh, talked about, the box and whiskers plot defines um, outliers as anything that's not within the range of 1.5 IQRs, interquartile ranges, from the third and the first um, quartile. So that's really good for measuring outliers on like a bell-shaped curve. It's really bad for measuring outliers on a curve that's heavily skewed like the ones that we see here. So what it ends up doing, what the, what the machine ends up doing is identifying a bunch of outliers here that just aren't outliers, right? And, and we're used to seeing this, uh, but maybe I haven't put it in those terms yet. But yeah, so these dots look like they could be um, qualified as outliers, but um, we just see that it's data that's skewed to the right. So they're, they're in fact not outliers, okay? Good, good, good. All right, so we have done this. Um, we want to probably go ahead and save that script. I'll just call it, yep, distribution. That's good. 
uh, or maybe I'll put a number in front of it. So whatever step in the process it was. So step two, distribution. Um, number three is correlations. Um, this is when we go and we compare all of our quantitative variables or all of our continuous variables to one another to see if there's um, correlations. Um, mainly we care about this for our independent variables because we want to think about like the uh, potential later on when we're actually modeling um, that maybe like multicollinearity might might happen. So we want to go ahead and do this. We just want to look for heavy correlations or just anything that seems related here. Okay, so I believe it is multivariate methods, multivariate. And we just have two of them, so we actually didn't even need to do that. We could have just went to fit y by x. All right, so it just shows us correlation here. Um, let's go here. Get our pairwise correlation. There should just be one. So we have a correlation of 0 0.01 or negative 0.01, so it's just not even close to significant. And we see here with our uh, 0.6775, um, that is the likelihood that, um, oh well, that is the likelihood that it is not a significant probability. Okay. All right. So we can go ahead and save that. The lab might have you do something slightly more extensive, but I'm confident you guys um, um, will be able to do that. Correlation. Why? I'm not spelling it right. Correlation. Yes. Look on the screen, Matt. All right. Sounds good. All right. So number four, fit y by x, simple logistic regression, and contingency table analysis. All right. So the... Simple logistic regression is where we're going to take our um, our categorical dependent variable, throw it into the y, or throw it into the response, and then everything else. Um, or so, no, sorry, for the simple logistic regression, it's just going to be one variable. So we go ahead and do fit y by x. We throw our status one or loss and then we'll go ahead and put everything else into the X and this should run us yeah so this will run us um, simple logistic regressions for when we have continuous independent variables and it will run us a um, it will run us a mosaic plot or a chi-squared um, you know, contingency table analysis when it's categorical, categorical, right? So the difference with the fit y by x versus like the fit model, the fit y by x is going to be comparing simply, meaning it's going to be comparing one variable to one other variable, right? Whereas the fit model is when we're throwing multiple variables at our dependent variable, okay? So we just want to go ahead and look at this. I feel like this is an activity that we've done before in a previous lab because these graphs look very familiar. Um, but we just want to look to see if the variables that we're looking at are significant predictors um, of our dependent variable. So we're looking at status by quote, meaning quote is the independent variable, status is our dependent variable. We're going to look here at our whole model test and we see that the chi-squared um, probability is not less than um, 0.05 or not less than you know whatever threshold that we have. 0.01 or something like that. And so we can say that quote is not going to be a significant predictor of status. Um, we move along. Um, time to delivery. Um, we look down here in our model here for our whole model to see if we have significance. We obviously do. Um, we can see by the graph too because what we see is the probability as the number of, of days change. So we'll go ahead and look at these together. We see the probability as the number of days change on the time to delivery, the probability that blue line, the probability of uh, losing or winning a bid changes dramatically, right? Like the slope of that line is very steep um, relative to the change in the number of days. Whereas if we look back at quote, the slope in this line is not 
steep relative to the change in in the quote price okay but yeah so that's one way to look at it um, you know the, the the testing of the model is is this ANOVA that's run on the on the chi squared um, and we get 0 0.001 um, and then we want to look at um, is part type affecting it and we see that we look at the Pearson chi, chi squared test over here and we get 0 0.0193 so it is significant and you can kind of tell that in the mosaic plot when you when you switch from an aftermarket part to um, a original equipment part how the probability of winning or losing a bid a bid changes how you see this line jump up okay so we go ahead so that is our step four so things of note is that quotes not going to be important time to delivery and part type are okay so just you know kind of kind of save that in your mental game there all right so I'll just I'll just label it as number four for now number five value ordering um, we want to uh, uh, we want the positive outcome to be defined and listed second in the value ordering to match our confusion matrix in terms of sensitivity and specificity calculations. All right, so we are going to go to our status. We're going to right click on it. We're going to go to column, uh, column properties, value ordering. We just want to make sure that lost is on the top and um, um, uh, one is on the bottom and it is all right all right number six let's partition the data into training and validation using a 75 25 split and create a uh, validation column that uh, you will use for both the logistic regression and the decision tree model okay we know how to do that that is analyze predictive modeling make a validation column and we're already at 7525, which is hit formula random, and it makes it for us. So that's good. Create a multiple logistic regression uh, model to predict the status with only significant independent variables. Okay, this is what we were just talking about um, with regards to um, leaving out, um, was it quote? Leaving out quote, um, because that one wasn't significant. Um, since we changed the value ordering so that the one is second, we will interpret the odds. Um, uh, we will interpret the odds in terms of losing the order. Okay, so just that's that is um, um, uh, you know that's important to note. Okay, so fit model status. That's the win or lose part type and time to deliver and we're going to leave off quote and we have to remember to put validation into um, our validation and we hit run okay then we want to go ahead and turn on all of the odds ratios so that um, what we have matches up here for the most part um, most things aren't going to match up only because our validation columns from the printout here are are going to be different so you're not going to see the same numbers there um, let's see here all right and so i think that is that uh oh let me turn on our confusion matrix and let's and this is not wanting to fit at all that is annoying okay sorry guys just hang with me here aha there we go okay got the confusion matrix on there all right so now we're gonna learn a new a new topic here okay so we've got all of our We've got all of our printouts. We can interpret our odds ratios. That's that, right? We, we've we've done that before. Um, if if you recall, um, when we interpret our unit odds ratio, it's for every um, one unit um, that the independent variable moves. 
that odds ratio is then the multiplier that gets multiplied to the probability on the dependent variable, right? So for time to delivery, well, we got unit odds ratio, odds ratio here. So for every day that um, of, of delivery, the probability of losing the order goes up by a factor of 1.018291, okay? All right. So that, that is the concept there. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about something um, that we have, I guess, sort of touched on before, but um, not really talked about in this sense. We've done um, what we call, uh, you know, accuracy calculation and a misclassification rate, that sort of thing. But now we're going to talk about um, something called specificity and sensitivity, okay? And as you can see there, um, sensitivity is how well our model predicts winning when it's true, all right? And then specificity is how well our model predicts losing when it's true. So the formula, and I'm sorry that it's kind of messed up here on the page. I'll try to fix that before I get it out to you. The formula is TP, or a true positive, over a true positive um, plus a false negative. Okay, so false negative is when something is predicted to be um, a loss, but is actually a win. Okay, so our sensitivity is going to be, basically, we want to know, given that something is positive, what's the likelihood that it was predicted so, right? So then we take our true positives over all of our positives, like everything that actually was positive. So basically, you can look at this at this um, column and see, okay, everything that was a win, so everything that was a positive is a 28 and a 47, right? And our true positives were ones that were also predicted to have won. Okay, so then our sensitivity rate is just going to be our 47 over our 28 plus 47. Okay, and that's going to be what is called our sensitivity. And then, furthermore, specificity is just like the exact opposite of that, okay? Not the exact opposite in that it's one minus that, but the exact opposite that it is how well are we going to predict negatives when they happen, right? And so it's just saying we want to take our true negatives over all of our negatives. So it would be our true negatives over our true negatives plus our false positive. It's called a false positive because it was predicted to be positive, but it was actually negative, okay? So that's just basically taking your true negatives, which would be, was predicted as a negative and is a negative, all over everything that was actually a negative, so 37 and 28. So it would be 37 over 37 plus 28, okay? And because my numbers aren't gonna match up what your numbers are more than likely because of uh, validation and whatnot, um, I'm not even gonna like go ahead and do the calculation on here. It makes more sense that we talk about it over here right all right so go ahead and then whoa i don't know what's going on there all right so go ahead back to our jump and we are going to save this right actually we have to save the probability formula first um, in step nine so we hit a red triangle and then we go to save probability formula that's going to bring in the probability formula um to the right and label the column headers with the letters L R. All right, so let me go ahead and save this script first. And I'll just call it nominal logistic, it's fine. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just add in L R underscore that. Same thing here. We're at nineteen minutes so far. I think we're I think we're gonna win. I think we're gonna do it. All right, and we hit a 
Okay. Is that it? That is it. All right, now we move on to number 10. Create the decision tree using the same validation column you created earlier. Find and interpret the best decision tree for this data based on your set variables. Okay, so we could go through the process that we have gone through in the past where we kind of throw all the variables in there, but let's not do that. Um, let's say we've already decided that quote um, is, isn't a significant predictor. So let's just go ahead and run the decision tree based upon the small number of variables um, that we used for, oh, excuse me, for the logistic. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and start our decision tree. Okay, predictive modeling, partition. Um, and because I already ran through this and it was giving me some issues and I'm not quite sure why, um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw uh, all three of the variables that we have into our X. Um, I was running it with just two and it was coming up and giving me a really funky, um, a funky, uh, uh, like confusion matrix and whatnot. Um, so I'm just not, I'm not, yeah, um, I, I don't want that to like derail your lab, you know. So if you're going about that, I would rather you include some of these um, less than significant variables by the logistic regression standard or the simple logistic regression standard um, and so that we can get a, get a product and, and get some learning in. Okay, so we go here, we want to get rid of our split stats. We want to add in our split probabilities. Um, you could add in split counts or probability count. Um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Um, we can toss in our leaf report and our show fit details, which that is the decision trees confusion matrix. We just hit go. Okay, so it shows us all this stuff shows us when it stops splitting down here and that's when um, the validation columns are squared caps out um, we have six splits we have all of our different prediction rules right here okay and all of our probabilities associated with that um, we come down here we have our generalized r squared okay which our generalized r squared is the amount a variation that is explained by the independent variables onto the dependent variable. So 15% of um, the variation is explained by the independent variables. We have our confusion matrix here, our, le our leaf report, um, and we can um, run very similar um, confusion matrix um, sensitivity specificity calculations on this confusion matrix. Um, and then really what you want to do is you want to be able to compare the logistic regression that we just ran with the um, decision tree that we just ran from the perspective of sensitivity, specificity, accuracy, misclassification. The idea being that like if having a false negative or a false positive is something that is more detrimental um, or more important to you um, in terms of your analysis, right? Like, if you're selling widgets, that's one thing. Maybe a false positive or a false negative isn't really a huge deal. But if you're dealing in, like, healthcare where, um, you know, having a false positive or a false negative could cost somebody their life, then what you want to do is you want to know which one of those is a false positive, which one of those is a false negative, and you might want to evaluate and adjust your model to account for these things, all right? So you want to be able to know how to calculate these things. All right, and then I'll go ahead and save this real quick. That's fine. And compare your decision tree and your logistic regression models and make recommendations as to which one the organization should use. Like I said, I'm gonna let you go ahead and do that. Um, so the things that you can look at for that are going to be R squared. You can compare the R squareds. Um, you know, that's the variation explained by the independent variables um, in terms of the model. Okay, there is the accuracy rate, the misclassification rate, the sensitivity, the specificity, 
Um, what else? There is the prediction profiler that you could use. Um, yeah, all those things. But yeah, okay, good. Shorter video, that's good. This should get you prepped for the model comparison lab that is going to be on Monday. Um, hope to see you all there, and let's get going on our last week before finals. All right, guys, take care. Bye.